Many critics said Brad Pitt's new movie went off the rails, and many urged audiences to get off the bullet train. Directed by David Leach, Deadpool 2. The film is a westernized version of a Japanese author's bestseller of 2010. On his way from Tokyo to Kyoto, Pitt takes on a series of assassins under the instruction of his handler, Sandra Bullock. The Guardian described it as weirdly exhausting and overwhelmingly unfunny. It rattles strenuously on and on and on with unexciting and uninterestingly choreographed fights, cameos which briefly pep up the interest in placeholder non-lines where the funny material should have gone, wrote Peter Bradshaw, in his two-star review. Pitt's puppyish good nature keeps it from flatlining entirely but he doesn't have anything like the script and direction that he got from Soderbergh or Tarantino or Fincher. And the Japanese setting is handled really cursorily, there are gags about Japanese toilets which should have gone out in the 1980s. This is a tourist ride to nowhere. Wednesday marked the release of the action comedy film in the UK. Taking the role of the experienced but unlucky of late assassin Ladybug, Pitt returns to the criminal fold with apparently simple orders from Bullock's Maria Beadle to collect a briefcase. In the process, the American finds himself competing against a number of other eccentric hired killers, such as Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Tyree Henry, Joey King, and the rapper Bad Bunny. Robbie Collin gave Bullet Train only one star in his Telegraph review, calling it the cinematic equivalent of a delayed 17.20 to Didcot Parkway. He wrote, The film's version of Japan, largely rendered in computer graphics, is clankingly inauthentic, while the script, adapted by Zach Olkovich, veers between edginess by committee, lots of swearing and wannabe guy Richie riffing, and sometimes staggering laziness. During one particularly bad scene, Pitt ends a comic monologue by asking the viewer to insert, I don't know, something witty. The 58-year-old Pitt, Colin stressed, was badly miscast as the movie's motor-mouthing smart-ass leading man. Flashbacks help the audience to understand how Pitt's ladybug and his assailants have all arrived on the same train at the same train and, for screen daily, they constitute a rogues gallery of lovable weirdos, with Leech delighting in watching them bounce off each other, sometimes literally, as they're trapped on the same fast-moving transport. Bullet Train has no shortage of giddy, madcap gusto, hoping to satiate hardcore genre fans with its bloody, over-the-top violence and rising body count, continued Tim Grierson. But this lumbering locomotive proves to be neither hilariously amoral nor liberatingly violent, it makes quite a commotion, but mostly just spins its wheels. But there was a more positive reaction from Metro's Tory Brazier, who awarded it four stars. Bullet Train is a slick and satisfying ride off the rails, which never takes itself too seriously, as evidenced in its slapstick choreography, surprise Hollywood cameos and violently funny use of fluffy Japanese mascots, she wrote. As Brits, we can also get behind the entire sequence based around the train's quiet carriage, as Ladybug and Lemon, Tyree Henry, engage in a silent but deadly tryst while trying to avoid the loud tuts of another passenger. Pitt won his first acting Oscar in 2020 for Best Supporting Actor in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Pitt told Variety at the Los Angeles premiere of his new film that he delegated some of his characters' more dangerous moments to his stuntmen. I try to get out of it, I love a stuntman, Pitt said. This one was action comedy, something I've never done before, he added. Director. David. Leach, and I had always been big fans of Jackie Chan, we'd been talking about him for decades. He's kind of our Buster Keaton. He's so talented and underrated even. Just to do something in that direction was what was really appealing to me. Variety branded Bullet Train at wildly complicated, and, gleefully overloaded, high-speed battle royal. Peter de Bruges wrote that the film, feels like it comes from the same brain as Snatch, the pit-starring Guy Ritchie movie, wearing its pop style on its sleeve, a Kill Bill-level mix of martial arts, manga and Gabby hit man movie influences, minus the vision or wit that implies. The adaptation of the pulp novel makes the characters twice as eccentric as necessary, he continued, concluding that while this may be a fun enough ride, none of it is particularly deep. Christina Newland of iNews had the same reaction, the vaguely fun bits and pieces in Bullet Train can't make up for its obnoxious tone. Even Brad Pitt can't save it. Nevertheless, Empire could be more appealing than some other critics, albeit with similar reservations. In a three-star review, Ben Travis said Bullet Train continued its director's post-wick trajectory into bigger, splashier, more cartoonish territory. Like its transportation namesake, 
Bullet Train is fast, slick, and shiny. But this is less intent on going directly from A to B than it is looping back around on itself in knots of coincidences and contrivances, as a cavalcade of contract killers clash in the carriages, he wrote. The results are frequently fun, especially whenever Pitt is on screen, blow drying his hair with a tricked out Japanese toilet, repeating his therapy mantras, hurt people hurt people, and silently scuffling with lemon in the quiet carriage. His chemistry, too, with Sandra Bullock's largely off screen handler is charming. What it isn't, in any way, is deep, he added. Style over substance feels like the whole point here, and the style itself is substantial, but Bullet Train only ever operates on a surface level.